Scientists, we are almost done with lesson four. This is lesson four, part three, collecting evidence using our digital model. The things you'll need for this lesson are a map of oceans and continents. You can either draw this or use the page from the lesson four packet. You need something to write on, something to write with, and you need another person to talk to. During lesson four, we have learned two new vocabulary words. We learned the word ocean current, which is ocean water flowing in a continuous path. And we also learned the word gyre, which means a giant pattern of moving water that spans whole oceans and moves water from place to place in a circle. If you look at this picture, you can see that there are ocean currents that form these gyres. It's pretty spectacular stuff. Okay, so here's what we're going to do with what we've learned. We are going to be tracking currents in the sim. Using our digital model, we'll observe currents and gyres, and then we'll draw the path of the currents that we track. So this is a picture that's from the sim, and you can draw a similar picture in your notes, or you can use the packet for lesson four. This is how you get onto the Amplify Science Sim. You go to your account, click on the menu, scroll down till you see Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate, and you click there and open it up. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. What I'd like for you to do is open the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Sim and select Current Map Mode. Be sure none is selected in the temperature. I know it's a lot of fun to have the temperature picture with all the colors, but we just want none. We just want to see the currents. And then find a current that could be part of a gyre. Remember, we're looking for a gyre that's a circular path. And then tap anywhere on the current to activate a tracking system that observes the path of the current. That's pretty cool. This is the link one more time. If you'd like to get a lesson four packet, it has a picture of this map. When you're done in the sim, there are three questions that I'd like for you to answer, and we'll come back and sort of go over those together. But let's get into the sim. So go ahead and click here, and let's get started. Okay, I've opened the sim. You'll notice that I have it on map mode. You can see that in the over here in the modes. This is the current map. That's what we want. And then the temperature view is selected as none so that we can just see the ocean. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And then all of these cool little lines appear. And what I do is I just go ahead and click anywhere for something that I think might be part of a gyre and I can watch where the water goes. It also tells me what temperature it is. That's pretty cool. So I clicked here and this one's moved all the way over there. And if I want to, I can come up here to speed it up. I want for you to spend at least 10 minutes exploring the sim. I'm just gonna explore it for a little bit of time. So that one just kind of went down here and then fell off the map. So let's click on another one. I, I can kind of see that there seems to be a gyre sort of here, but this one is moving over and then it's like getting closer and closer to continent A, and then it slides down the continent. It doesn't, oh, now it's going to kind of start to come back. Maybe, nope, it's going back to the pole. Let's try a little bit higher. Let's click on this one. Okay, it's moving around. So I've just clicked on this circle and it started to move this way and now it's moving that way and now it's, yeah, definitely forming a gyre. We have success. Okay. There are lots of other places on the map that you can explore. In fact, you can actually click on the map and drag it. How cool is that? So if something seems like it's going to go off the page and you want to get some more like a better look at it, go for it. And then we come back and we can see that where we clicked, it's still roaming around in that gyre. It's a beautiful gyre. I really wanna encourage you to explore the sim some more on your own. But for this video, we're gonna move on to the final part of today's lesson, which is taking what we've learned from the article and from our sim exploration and coming up with a few conclusions. So the three questions that I'd like for you to answer are one, describe the shape of the path of the current you tracked. Is it a circle? Is it an S shape? And I did at least two or three in my video 
of the sim and I could describe all of those or I could just describe the one at the end. And then it says, draw a star on the image to indicate the place where you think the current had the most energy. So for number one, where it says describe the path, you could just draw it. It might be easier than trying to describe it as a circle. So show where it is and then put a star where you think it had the most energy. Why did the current have the most energy in this location? Why are you saying that? What evidence supports your idea? And then the final question I want you to answer is, thinking back to the shoe spill in the ocean in motion, how might those shoes have traveled from the middle of the Pacific Ocean to Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan? At the end of lesson three, air temperature around the world, I posed this final question. I said, why is the ocean near Christchurch a different temperature than we'd expect for its latitude? I think we could answer this question now. Now we understand that the temperature of the ocean has a lot to do with how ocean currents move around our planet. Water with lots of energy at the equator moves away from the equator, taking the energy with it. Cold water near the poles moves away from the poles and takes that cold water with it on an ocean current. And that can dramatically affect the temperature of the ocean near Christchurch. So the next thing we need to try to figure out is how does the ocean temperature affect the air temperature of Christchurch and what might be happening differently during El Nino years to affect the air temperature of New Zealand? Okay, we'll explore some of those mysteries during lesson five. See you next time.